This week, I'm praying for shalom. I'm praying for shalom with an intensity that I have not prayed for shalom with in a very long while. And believe it or not, when I see images of protests in cities across the country and our world, I see shalom. Where is there shalom in moments of great tension, moments of protests? For me, my shalom is not just a temporary, a temporary quelling of conflict. Shalom is a bigger peace, a larger wholeness. Not a temporary entente back to the status quo, but a transformative peace where the dignity of each soul is honored and respected, where we all feel really safe. In this week's Parsha, we read the words of the priestly blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God deal kindly and graciously with you. May God bestow God's favor upon you and grant you peace. We know these ancient words so well. We've been connecting to each other at the end of our Friday night services and using these words to bless each other. We all want shalom. We all want peace, especially at this time. We want to feel protection and safety from this global pandemic, which threatens us and those that we love. We want to see an end to police violence against people of color and peaceful protesters who are fighting for justice. In a way, we might just want everything to go back to normal. But the truth is that returning to normal is not returning to shalom. Going back to normal where a person of color is 21 times more likely to be shot by a police officer than a white person. Where unemployment for people of color is double that of white people in most areas. Where your race and your zip code affect much of the challenges and opportunities that you'll be provided in your life. That's not shalom. Finding shalom in this moment is a much larger prayer. Shalom is a wholeness in which all of us feel safe, in which all of us have opportunity. The medieval commentators explain that the word shalom in the priestly blessing is much larger than calm. The 15th century Italian commentator Sforno teaches that peace refers to an infinite, unbroken, and undisturbed existence, a feature of the world to come. And the Or HaChaim, the 18th century Syrian rabbi, describes shalom as the opposite of every kind of separation and fragmentation. These definitions are not about calm. They're about wholeness. Sforno explains that this type of peace only exists in the world to come. It's a kind of messianic peace, which we're all striving for in every moment with our prayers and with our deeds. It won't come all at once. It takes time. It takes work. From the priestly blessing, I learned the work of bringing this sense of justice, this sense of wholeness into the world. It's our work. God does not give the blessing directly to the Israelites, but rather asks the priests to deliver the blessing on God's behalf. Perhaps God knows that the Israelites need to work at the practice of blessing each other, that only by doing this work of blessing each other will they be able to commit to the work of seeking justice for each other in the world. In my mind, when we do the work of seeing each other, of validating the humanity of every soul, of blessing each other through our fight for racial and economic justice, God is right there with us. When I'm protesting or advocating or learning about injustice, I feel it. I feel God. There's a midrash about the priestly blessing that reminds me about God's presence in these moments. The congregation of Israel said to the Holy One, Blessed be God, Master of the universe, you tell the priests to bless us, but really we only need you to bless us. Why are you asking the priests to give this blessing to us? Can't you do it? And the Holy One, blessed be God, responded to them, Although I've told the priests to bless you, I'm standing along with them and blessing you. For this is the reason why the priests spread their hands with their fingers open. I can't really do the thing. I must not be a Kohen. But the priests give the blessing with their fingers open. Kind of like this. And God says the reason they do this is that to the Holy One, blessed be God, is standing behind the priests. So it says in the verse of Song of Songs, there he stands behind our wall 
gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. And the Midrash compares this verse to God standing behind the fingers of the priests, the lattice that they're making with their fingers, and peering through the hands of the priests, looking onto the people and blessing them. When we raise our hands for blessing and for justice, God is peering through that lattice too, standing right there with us. I have a deep hope that our collective work will bring us to a greater sense of shalom. That the chaos of this moment has purpose, and its purpose is for the wholeness of our world. That we make cracks just so that the light can enter. So let us continue to raise our hands, to bless each other, to fight for equity, to fight for shalom. Yevarech echa Adonai veyishmerecha Yair Adonai pana velecha Veyikunaka isa Adonai pana velecha Veyasem lecha shalom Shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone.